Hello and welcome to this discussion, chapter 8.1, uh, discussion on confidence intervals and going through some of the basics on conf confidence intervals and the overall discussion about estimating uh, with some degree of confidence and what that means. Uh, so there are four things that we want to uh, cover. Uh, the first is going to be the idea of a confidence interval. Then we'll talk about interpreting confidence intervals, constructing confidence intervals, and then as part of that, using uh, and interpreting the confidence intervals uh, wisely. All right, so let's uh, go back to our discussion about uh, proportion. We talked about this in the last chapter, so this is a refresher. So sample proportion is going to be the proportion of a sample that meets a given criteria. So example, the proportion of Mr. A's stats class that gets five uh, out of five on an AP stats exam. So we'll say that it's approximately 80%. And then the population proportion is going to be the proportion of all students uh, that uh, take statistics that get a five on a five in the AP stats exam. Let's say that's 60%, right? So also just refreshing on the way mathematically that we designate uh, with symbols. Sample proportion is a P with a hat and then population proportion is just going to be the straight P. All right, so let's talk about point estimators and point estimates. Point estimator is going to be a statistic that provides an estimate for a population uh, parameter. And in the previous slide, we said that parameter could be a proportion. And then a point estimate is going to be the value of that uh, point estimator statistic. And the point estimate is going to be the best guess for the value of the unknown parameter. So uh, as examples, possible point estimators and point estimates would be the sample proportion, which we discussed previously, would be the estimator. And then the estimate would be 0.58. Sample IQR would be the point estimator. And let's just say some random number 23 would be that estimate. Sample median would be the estimator. 5.24 would be the estimate. Sample standard deviation would be the estimator. And 0 0.18 would be the estimate. So the parameter can be any of these, or the est uh, point estimate uh, can be any of these, and the parameter for the population can be any of these. All right, so let's uh, go through an example of qualifying some examples um, and then defining the estimators and the estimates. So for each of the following, determine the point estimator you would use and calculate the value of the point estimate. First is what proportion of U.S. high school students smoke? In a survey of 14,000 high school students, 2,800 said they had smoked cigarette, cigarettes at least one day in the last month. So what's the estimator and what's the estimate? And the second uh, example or part of the example, the quality control inspectors want to investigate the variability in battery life by estimating the variance of the population where the sample variance is 0 0.508. All right, so we're going to use sample proportion as the estimator, and uh, 0 0.20 is the estimate for the first one. Uh, and the second one, we're going to use population variance as estimator, and 0 0.508 as the point estimate. This brings us to our first homework problem. Let me just leave that back up for a second. So this brings us to our first homework problem, 8.1.1. Um, so uh, here are two situations I need for you to identify the point estimator and the point estimate. I'm going to leave this up here for a moment for you to copy this down, and then I am going to move on. All right, so second thing we want to talk about is interpreting confidence levels and confidence intervals. So, uh, so we have to be careful about how we state confidence intervals. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And initially, this is going to be a little theoretical. So just bear with me as I go through uh, some of the definitions and characteristics of interpreting confidence uh, levels and confidence intervals. And as we do more practice, you'll get the hang of it. It shouldn't be a problem, uh, but I'm going to start with a theory and then go with an example. All right, so confidence interval for a parameter 
is an estimate plus or minus a margin of error. Uh, the estimate's the point estimate for the parameter, and the margin of error puts bounds in the range of values for that point estimate. So that's going to be our confidence interval. So we're going to construct some uh, value that's going to be our point estimate, and then we're going to put some bounds on that uh, using plus or minus some margin of error. And we're going to talk about how to construct that margin of error later. But that's our confidence interval. A confidence level gives the overall success rate of the method for calculating the confidence interval. That is, in whatever our confidence level, C percent of all possible samples, whatever method we're using would yield an interval that contains the true parameter. All right, so that's the definition of confidence intervals and confidence levels. So going back to some of the theory, uh, so we're going to take uh, 25 samples with a 95% confidence interval, interval, and we're going to run a simulation. And what we're going to get is, uh, as we run the 25 samples, uh, we're going to get a range of values with some mean value. All right, and so this range of values incorporates the true uh, population mean. So here is the uh, sampling distribution. The mean is this value. And as we run the samples with a 95% confidence interval, uh, we end up with all but one of the samples having um, an interval that contains the true population mean. All right, so what we're saying is as we construct these confidence intervals, we're saying that we're 95% confident that <clears throat> the uh, interval that we've constructed contains the true population mean. All right, and you can see in all but one of them, that's the case. So we have to clarify between our sampling and the actual population mean. All right, we did discuss that a little bit in chapter seven. All right, so going back to how we discuss confidence levels and confidence intervals. So confidence level is to say that we're 95% confident. It means that 95% of all possible samples of a given size from this population will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. Okay, so we would state something like 95% of all possible samples of a given size, so in the prior would be of size 25, from this population will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. That's our uh, confidence level. <clears throat> our confidence interval is to interpret a confidence level we say to interpret a confidence interval for an unknown parameter, we are C% percent confident that the interval between such and such and such and such, and X and Y, captures the actual value of the population parameter. All right, so this is a lot of theory without an example. Uh, and let me come back to this common error. So let's go through an example. <clears throat> and talk about co uh, confidence intervals and confidence level. All right, so let's say we did a survey of 16 students and found that the mean number of homework hours spent per semester was 240.79. We know that the distribution of the population is normal. We do not know the population mean, but we do know the standard deviation of the population is equal to 25. We want to find an interval, a confidence interval, within which 95% or whatever percent you want to choose, but for this case we'll say 95% of the time, we would locate the population mean. How do we do this? All right, so first thing was you need to verify normal conditions are met. We said that the population distribution is normal, so the sampling distribution is also going to be normal. Center, we're going to assume that the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the population distribution. And thirdly, we're going to assume uh, that 
uh, we don't have to worry about independence or dependence because n is going to be less than one tenth of n. All right, so we've uh, did a survey of 16 students. We know that uh, there are much more than 160 students. So we know that we've met the 10% criteria. So we can use the standard deviation formula, standard, devi standard deviation of the uh, sampling distribution is going to be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. All right, so we're going to do our calculations. First, we're going to define the confidence interval as the estimate plus or minus the margin of error. In this case, we had defined the point estimate as 240.79, right? We said the average number, uh, the mean number of hours spent was 240.79. And then <clears throat> we know that the standard uh, deviation for the population. We know that the population standard deviation is 25. So our sample standard deviation is going to be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is 16. This gives us 6.25. We recall that 95% encompasses plus or minus two standard deviations from our uh, rule of thumb, our empirical rule. So uh, two standard deviations times 6.25 gives us the margin of error, plus or minus two standard deviations, plus or minus 12.5. So it's 240.97 plus or minus uh, 12.5. And you can see graphically what this looks like uh, in a standard curve here. We've got this interval, uh, which is going to be based on our confidence level of 95%. That means that of a sample size of 16, we are 95% confident that the interval between uh, 240.97 minus 12.5 to 240.97 plus 12.5 will encompass the true population mean. All right, so just restating this, we're going to define the confidence interval. The confidence interval is the estimate plus or minus the margin of error, which includes the standard deviation <clears throat> uh, times whatever z value uh, we're we're using for that confidence level. And then we're going to use this information to make a statement about the unknown parameter, which is a population mean. And the statement reads, in 95% of all samples of 16, the confidence interval would capture the actual population mean. All right, so this is how it works. Uh, so now let's go back to our discussion about uh, confidence uh, intervals and confidence level. So we, we need to be careful about how we state this. So 95% of all possible samples of a given size from this population will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. We are 95% confident or C% percent confident that the interval, uh, 240.79 plus or minus 12 and a half, captures the actual value of the population parameter. Now there's a distinction to make and this is an AP exam common error, it's not okay to say there is a 95% probability that the true mean falls in the interval from 230 to 250, or whatever uh, we came up with for uh, that. Again, it is not okay to say that there is a 95% probability that the true mean falls in the interval, and I changed the intervals, that's why I stopped. Uh, and modify the video from 227.5 to 252.5. It's a math mathematically incorrect statement because either the true mean falls in the interval or it does not. So we can use probability or state probability for future events, but when we're talking about the interval itself with respect to confidence, confidence interval, we say that we're 95% confident that whatever interval we have contains that uh, the true population mean. We can use probability to reference future events, but not existing parameters. 
So we can say if we took a, an SRS and calculated a 95% confidence interval, then there is a 95% probability that the interval will contain the true mean. So there is a little bit of a distinction that you need to spend some time to understand so that you make the proper statements around confidence levels and confidence intervals. All right. So I think that brings us to the end of the first part. Um, and so we're going to pause here and we're going to come back in just a moment.